Y'all ready? Good morning. I'd like to bring the May 1st, 2019 Planning Advisory Commission meeting to order. The official start of the meeting is 9 a.m. and it is that time. If you will, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just as a reminder, if you would, if you check your cell phones and make sure they're on silent or turn them off. And I remind those in the audience and those watch, watching by television that this is the first hearing of any rezoning text change or special exception request brought before us today. We will first hear a reading of the staff report for the case by the planning staff and ask the applicant to provide a brief overview of the request. We will then give the opportunity for anyone in the audience to speak for or against that request or to inquire about the said request. Commissioners will have time for any needed discussion on this case. Once a motion is made and seconded by the commission, a vote will take place and recommendation will be re rendered. The case will go back to the planning department for their independent recommendation. If a favorable recommendation is given, then the case is forwarded to the city council with the two independent recommendations. If the planning department makes a rec recommendation for denial, the applicant will have 10 days from the receipt of a letter to, to denial to notify the clerk of council that they are requesting to be placed on the city council's agenda. And just a reminder, the city council of Columbus will hold a public meeting and it'll be called the first reading Said council will consider the case, review PAC and planning department recommendations, and hear discussion on the matter. Council will make a final decision at a second public meeting called the second reading. Now, first thing on our agenda today is the minutes, as everyone had an opportunity to take a look at the minutes from the, let's see, that would have been the April 3rd, 2019 meeting. Anybody had a chance to look at them? Any changes need to be made? No. Oh. With that, we'll just accept the minutes as, as printed. Okay, well, that brings us to our first case today, and it's a rezoning case. Case REZN 03190476. This is a request to rezone 0 0.24 acres of land located at 2214 Patty Avenue. Current zoning is GC, General Commercial. Proposed zoning is SFR3, Single Family Residential 3. Proposed use is Single Family Residential. Evelyn Montgomery is the applicant, and this property is located in Council District 7. Ms. Woodson, uh, we'll hear from Mr. Renfro first on the staff report, please. Yes, sir. The general land use is consistent in Planning Area C, District 7, Woodson. Current land use designation is single-family residential. Future is single-family residential. It is compatible with the existing, existing land uses. The property does not lie within the floodway and floodplain area. The developer will need an improved drainage plan prior to issuance of a site development permit if a permit is required. Property is served by all city services. Average annual daily trips will increase by 10 trips if used by four single family residential use. The level of service will remain in A. The site shall meet the codes and regulations of the CCG for residential usage. No school impact, no buffer requirements, uh, and no response for Fort Benning, um, no response for DRI recommendation. The surrounding zone in the north is SFR3, south is GC, east is GC, west is SFR3. 45 property owners within 300 feet of the subject properties were notified of the rezoning request. The planning department received no calls or emails regarding the rezoning. No additional information. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Renfro. Any questions? Mr. Reese? Well, I'll uh, to my friend here first. Mr. Um, Dudley? Do you have any idea why that <coughs> property was originally zoned for general commercial? Because it looks like the house has been there a lot longer than the UDO has been around. Um, we, we look back till 1999, and it was, it was zoned then, general commercial. Um, we, we don't have any other records past that, so it, it, it has been that since 1999. Uh, th that was my question, but also, Mr. Renfro, uh, when you guys looked at it, did you see any other commercial properties in that neighborhood that are currently zoned general commercial that may need to be addressed as well? There with is. This issue? Let me look real quick. 
The, the one next to it, 2218, is also general commercial. Um, at the time, we haven't had anyone step forward asking to rezone that as well, but it, it, it's the same situation right next door. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Now, the applicant come forward and state your name. It's going to be presenting this case. Uh, if you would step up to this microphone. Thank you. State your name and address, please. Good morning. I'm Abby Miller. I'm with the Finley firm. I'm an attorney, and I'm representing um, <clears throat> Ms. Montgomery in this matter. Um, she is here because she wants to have this property rezoned so that she can sell it, basically. It's, it's been used as single-family residential um, throughout um, their time of owning it. She's the executor of, of her parents' estate, and... I don't believe they even knew that it was zoned commercial until they were in the process of trying to sell it. Well, my, my, my could you state Could you step over the microphone and just yes. state your name and address? My name is Thank Evelyn you. Montgomery, 2805 Roswell Lane, Columbus, Georgia. Uh, my parents purchased, my father purchased that home in 1950s, the 50s. And what happened, uh, I don't know if my father was dead at the time, but uh, we just were surprised that it was zoned commercial, and I think I know what happened. My parent, my mom's primary language is English. That came home, say, my understanding, that letter came home saying, if you object, send it back. It was never sent back. And the same thing happened to the lady next door. Her, her primary language is Spanish, and she was not aware either. Apparently, she overlooked that too, so it was just by mouth that we heard, do you know this is zone commercial? We had a contract on the house. We just lost it because of that. And um, which is a big blow because it, it, it's pretty difficult to sell a house in South Columbus because it's really not cared for uh, in that area. So that's what happened because had we known, we would have sent that form back saying, no, we do not want it zone commercial. So the, the Mrs. Um, Santiago next door, she's going to have to go through the same process. Uh, when she departs and her children take it over. So that's what, that's what happened. So we were just literally shocked that it was, because all the houses on that street, they're, they're commercial except for those two. I guess they thought that Columbus, South Columbus was going to you know, revitalize or something, but since then there's many, many uh, businesses have gone out of business or have left because uh, you know, it's, it's not a good thing in South Columbus. Let me tell you that. I grew up there. It's not a good place anymore. Okay. Any questions? Commissioners? Yes, sir. Mr. Briner. When do you think that letter, when did y'all, uh, when did you think your mother received that letter? You know, we don't know. We were, we were asking everybody. I, at first, I thought that my sister had seen it, Anna Smith, and she says, no, I don't remember that letter. And so we learned from a neighbor, do you know that this is zone commercial? And we thought, okay, it's got to be that it's a dual com commercial residential. I don't know if there's such a being. Right. But that's what happened. Thank you. Any further questions? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Is there anyone the, in the audience that would like to speak for this case? Please come forward at this time. All right. That said, anyone in the audience le like to speak against this case? Please come forward at this time. All right. Doesn't look like anybody. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. As it relates to matter REZN 03190476, considering that it's compatible with the land usage as reported by the staff today, located at 2214 Patty Avenue, currently zoned general commercial, proposed zoning single family residential three. I move that we approve the zoning request. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second, Mr. Bo. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor to approve, raise your right hand. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, um, that concludes our zoning cases for today. Is there any new business, Mr. Rimfro? No new business. We don't have another meeting um, in May. The next one will be June the 5th. Though we have two cases lined up for that date. Um, and then just an update, the Salmon Road um, rezoning that came before us in December is planning to be um, heard, I believe it's June the 11th. Um, I may be mistaken on that date. Um, 
Um, and that's it. How are we doing on replacements of our? Uh, I believe I believe both of them are scheduled to be sworn in this month, so they should be available um, for the next meeting in June. Very good. Okay. Anybody have any questions? A quick question for Mr. Renfro. Uh, Mr. Renfro, and I probably should know this, but um, how often do we review the database to, to look for inconsistencies like what we heard today to see if there are potential residential uh, residents that have been residential facilities for years but are listed as something like general commercial, which wouldn't be in compliance um, with what they Generally, want. it's an, an ongoing process. Though we have an area. Um, up off of Bradley Park that is zoned incorrectly for its uses. Um, the process for that is basically we send out a letter asking if the owners as a, as a group would like to come forward and rezone that whole area at one time. Um, normally that is done on the, the planning department's um, dime. Um, in this case, in cases like this, we, we normally don't actually notice those um, because there, it's just two houses at, in one location. Uh, are we seeing any patterns of maybe system conversions that may have inadvertently changed someone's zoning in, in their neighborhood? Or uh, Because I'm just curious, if, if her father bought the house in, in the 50s and, and bought it as a residential location at the time, at what point and how did it get changed to general commercial? It had to happen somewhere. Right. At some point it did get changed. I, I'm, I'm I'm interested to, to do a little digging on the letter that may have been sent out. I don't know if we have a record of that. Um, depending on when it was sent out, we may or may not have it. Um, mm -hmm. And just trying to figure out more information about that. I, I, w I would greatly appreciate if you would do that, sir, because, it, you know, as, as the nice lady expressed today, it's a, a true inconvenience that they have lost a home sale. Right. Yes, sir. Um, because of, of, of a zoning issue and considering that you know, we still have a struggling housing market here in, in West Central Georgia. It's important that we don't have obstacles like this that get in the way of potential folks trying to sell homes and folks that want to buy it. Right. You yes, know. sir. So thank you so much for looking into that. No problem. All right. Any further discussion? No old business? Well, we're adjourned. Thank you.